So let's get right to it then. This interview is called Capturing the Voices of Those Who Are There. So recently, I don't know if you've heard, but Ace Combat 7 is now, you know, confirmed to be out pretty soon. And um, it's definitely trying to invoke Ace Combat 5 as much as possible. So what I kind of want to ask you is kind of talk me through how you got the job for Ace Combat 5 all 10 or 11 years ago. Well, um, yeah, I don't exactly remember, but but pretty much everything that happened 10, 11 years ago was basically just a, a phone call. And I can't remember who who was the, pro- the producing company of that. Um, um, we have, so I have something eight, like a production company. It says oh, you know, at magnitude at magnitude eight. eight. Yeah, that's magnitude eight. Yeah. So, um, so then it would have been Kevin Seymour who just passed away um, not that long ago. It was kind of a surprise because he's a pretty young guy. Um, uh, would have called and then would have been working with the animators and doing it that way. I'm trying to remember who too. Who? What? Which was my character? That wasn't Ken or oh, something. Oh, you don't even remember? Oh, okay, so this. No, is- I don't remember anything. So no. you were. Um, probably the best character. You were Chopper. The Chopper, of, okay. I remember. Yeah. Was he like a blonde dude? I'm trying to remember what no, he looked he, like. he was a brunette. He was kind of the, the Ringo to the Beatles, the Michelangelo to the Ninja Turtles, the Johnny Storm to the Fantastic Four. Kind of a funny there you go. poker guy. Well, it probably would have helped you if, if I had somehow, re- you know, researched this before your phone call. Because the thing is, now here's, and you're going to, you'll find this a lot with, uh, with a lot, especially, um, the voice actors who work a ton and have been doing it for a long time, <clears throat> um, and more so for even longer ago than ten years. But you know, the jobs just kind of came in, and and we were thrilled as as like kids to just get the job. So you just went and did it, and and games especially would have been. Um, a shorter um, a shorter work day, like two to four hours tops, and a really? lot of screaming, and then you just would like to forget that project as fast as you could because you probably couldn't talk for two or three days afterwards. So um, you have kind of a lot of lines in this game. Um, yeah. Uh, at least, uh, you said a four-hour work day. I can't believe it because you at least have four hours worth of, of dialogue, I, I want to say. Really, there's that much. Well, um, as well, and the, the thing is too is like, um, it's possible that they could have had me in, you know, twice to do it. But typically, mm-hmm. games, and this is kind of a, this is sort of an issue with the with the the strike that's mm-hmm. happening with the actors and and the Screen Actors Guild and and the gaming companies right now. Um, there's a ton of work pressed into a very small amount of time, and it's genuinely very stressful on your voice because um, most games include some sort of combat or dying or panic mode or you're on fire or whatever. So <laughs> it would be literally like three pages of one-liners that you know you do uh, light, medium, and then screaming out of your mind. So it would be like, Look over there! Look over there! Look over there! I mean that kind of a thing, and you just do that down three pages, and you know by the third one, your your soft look over there sounds like look over there. And now, so so real quick, yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, but we got a lot of questions. No, it's okay. Sure. Um, so, how, has there really been any game specifically? Because I know you've been in a lot of movies, and you you really should need your right. introduction because you've been out there pound, pounding the pavement. But is there any game? that you're really proud of and you, you like tell people, yeah, I was the guy in that game. That was me. You know what? Um, no, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to think because there were, well, um, there were a lot of the, um, uh, is it medal of honors? Those things, uh, airborne. Um, so like, um, I did probably the first three or four of those. The last one that I did was airborne, I think. So that's been a while ago. But it's kind of funny because, um, uh, you know, and again, when you're doing these games, you basically, <clears throat> you've got a picture of your character and then all of the lines. Mm-hmm. You don't know what other people are saying to you. So this yeah, is why, no so, so for example, so example, if like, uh, if, if, 
if uh, you know if if this one you know was was such a good one, then that's a tribute more to the producers and all that for explaining what they needed out of me more than my performance. Um, although you know, I feel free to you know you know treat me like <laughs> like a superstar, but yeah, but no, that would be like I really encourage you if you want to feel really good about yourself sometimes, go on Reddit, type in Ace Combat. And say hi, everybody. I'm the guy who was in Ace Combat. We'll all give you a tongue bath. All day. Well, that's cool. You know, it's um my um my kids are heavily into um, my older boy is is really into League of Legends, and he's one of the elite players in North America and stuff. So I, I know all about Reddit from all that kind of stuff. Um, so, real quick, what, uh, another quick question. Um, I don't know if you remember. You say you probably don't. Um, you did just refresh my memory, and, and yeah, you'll so help me your out. Your character is one of the only major characters to die in any of the combat games. Almost everybody lives. They're very upbeat games. So about halfway through Ace Combat 5, you your plane is shot down, and rather than ditch your plane uh, over a bunch of houses, you decide to stay in the air for a while until, um, you know, it's too late, basically. Your plane's ejection system doesn't work. And so you crash right. into this big stadium instead that's all empty. And so there's a cool. moment afterward, because it's a really hard mission, and there's tons of planes coming at you, and you've been fighting for, like, ten minutes. And then you, like, the best character, okay? Now, uh-huh. for me, as a kid, like, 11 years old, this was hard to deal with. And so right at that moment, there's, like, a moment of stunned silence, I start screaming, uh, my, uh, the other squad members start screaming, everybody's freaking out, and then there's silence, and then more enemy planes come in. And this is kind of the big thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about. Sure. Because it's so powerful, this moment, you got to understand. This new wave of enemies comes in, and I know all and every other player did is just to rip them to shreds. You know, we all went for those guys. We blew them up in like two seconds. And what's cool, that I think this is where that producer thing you're talking about came in. Right. Is the enemies react to how good you're getting all of a sudden. They're like, oh, crap, you know, they're maneuvering better than before. And we still no chance, you know. And at the same time, you are actually doing better. So what do you feel about that kind of... Um, passion, that the combination of your performance and obviously the producer kind of create in the player. Do you feel like good about it? You know, or are you kind of indifferent about it? Well, I, you know, I, it, it's kind of, it's kind of a thrill anytime that, that, that something has, um, you know, that kind of an impact. Um, so it's, it's, it's really kind of, it's a wild thing. Um, you know, for me, like for for example, I mean, you know, just I I just did a, you know, a Power Rangers convention uh, this summer, and it's just kind of a trip to me that anybody cares, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so for example, so like, um, in fact, like this Ace Combat thing, I mean, it might be advantageous, you know, like we'll have this interview, but maybe you know, you can call me back in a week, and you know, and I'll go back and try and look at it and yeah. and. Be- Get, get you know get, like refamiliarize myself with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wish I could just get a copy of the game somewhere and then yeah, let it play its movie. Movies. I mean, are there? I mean, are there things like uh, YouTube videos where it, yeah, it'll do so the, you the do plot? Do it'll do the YouTube. plot. Yeah, you could go yeah. watch the entire game on YouTube if you want to. How long does that take? <laughs> oh, you can do the highlight reel. They they have it cut down so that you know you're yeah. just getting the plot points if you want. Well, so and see, and that would have probably been that would have been good for me to do before talking to you because I, oh, it's like oh, it's that, it's that. See, and that's the thing. That's the thing about um, all of us. It's like um, the games kind of run into the anime projects mm-hmm. to you know everything. Else. So, like for example, like if you if, you know you know you say I've been pounding the payment. You look at IMDb and you see you know a list of two hundred credits. It's literally not even a tenth of the stuff that voice actors like me that I've done. Um, because especially like I mean as as many as twenty years and more ago, none of us wanted to be known as voice people. Because we were serious on camera guys, you know. So, 
we didn't even negotiate with the Screen Actors Guild to put our names in the credits. You know, they'll, they'll put the person who's driving the food truck in the credits, but <laughs> um, but really um, only recently have they started putting all of our names in for the people who do voice replacement or you know um, you know all that kind of stuff, and well, and, and it's at right producer's now. discretion. I can tell you right now, when you play the game, when you get to the credits, your name does pop up under the the U.S. cast. So. Cool. Well, that's well, that's different. Like the game is is a different thing. So that's kind of oh, cool. Yeah. And then there's a lot of stuff um, that um, will come up, you know, as me. But it's Christy Matthewson. I do a one man show as an old baseball player, and so yeah, some of the yeah, some of the smaller budget stuff um, it, it pops up as as that. So any of those are me. And uh, so anyway, there's there's just a lot of stuff. So it just kind of becomes a mush. Um, you know, I, I died so many times that, you know, um, I'm trying to remember, I, it, I seem to remember, you know, quote unquote, flying over and doing, doing that kind of stuff. And so it's like Kevin and is it Soji? I'm trying to think who are the Japanese, um, uh, fellow who I would have... fly, fly over and, and help out on the, that they were doing stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask how much you collaborated with the, the Japanese guys because they had their sound director there. Right, and, and they they, they would just... Um, uh, Dave, Dave something, Dave Barr? Um, yeah, so typically what they would do, you know, it would be uh, Kevin Seymour at Magnitude 8 um, would be, you know, on the other side of the, you know, I'm in the booth there on the other side of the glass with, uh, you know, one of the Japanese guys or one of the animators or whatever. And then they would discuss stuff, which I wouldn't hear, you know, cause the, you know, the, you know they could be saying, gosh, he really sucks for all I know. Um, and then they would say, uh, you know, Eddie, could you do it uh, once more, but like pretend that your big toe's on fire? He's like, oh, okay. And and so then they would get what they needed, and I don't know what you know. I mean, it's like, and then they're ha- and I go, is really, was that is that okay? Yes, perfect. Moving on. So it's like, that's okay. The one okay. big question I had for SAG after a strike two is one complaint I heard that really shocked me genuinely is you don't even know what the game could be about half the time. Um, they don't well, that's that's games. true, but that's not what that's not what the strike is about. The the strike is about it's it's the the contract is so ridiculously unfair, and it would seem to you um, like oh cool man you go let's let's just say a thousand dollars okay no, awesome no, man that's, for, that's well just just let's just pretend it's a thousand dollars for two hours of work okay well that's awesome. Um, but you look, but then you look at the game, like the game project, look at it like Major League Baseball, and we're the players. And for years and years and years, the owner said, oh, no, 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 we don't have the money, we don't, we can't, we can't pay, blah, blah, blah. To where guys like Henry Aaron, the most they ever got paid was $100,000, and that was considered outrageous. Mm-hmm. And now you've got crap players who are making $20 million a year because the pie is so huge. And for games specifically, they they pretty much they they make more than DVDs and Blu-ray sales, almost twenty times more, right. um, because each because you they're more different. Or you can't really bootleg them like like movies. Um, so Very people are buy the people are buying the individual units to play them because they want them, and you know they're like fifty bucks a unit instead of fourteen dollars and. Right. They sell, they sell, you know, 20 times as many, mm-hmm. and and yet the contract for the actors for games is is a straight buyout. So let's say a thousand dollars. So they could make, you know, 250 million dollars on a game, and they're paying the actors. Let's say there's 20 actors. It costs them twenty thousand dollars to do that, mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of ridiculous. So anyway, so that's it. It's just to negotiate a. Um, uh, you know, and, and it's it's baby steps, but to negotiate some sort of residual structure like they do in movies and TV, to where there's compensation for numbers of units sold, kind of yeah, basically like a, to like figure a, out some sort, some yeah, to, to figure out some sort of a, an equitable arrangement to be more fair um, to the actors that are providing the product. That's all. No. Another um, voice actor, the, he's the kind of the big guy. He does a lot of big games. His name's Nolan North, and he kind of scoffs at you guys. Like, oh, you know, why are they complaining? But he gets paid. That's because he doesn't get it. 
Yeah. He doesn't get it. Yeah. So does that kind of hurt you? Like, you, don't you think that you like? Because I like him. He's a good actor, but at the same time. Well, well, what what hurts is that people are doing non-union work. So here's the here's the thing. It's it's. Um, so again, I th- you know I think and when you talk to these people, it really you know Major League Baseball is the perfect analogy to it. Um, you know well, that's ridiculous. They're getting paid blah 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 thousand dollars. Even let's say it's twenty five thousand. Let's say it's a hundred thousand um, dollars. You know it's ridiculous. They should be happy. Da, da, da. And it's like well. Yeah, you are if you're just going check to check, but but you you know if I mean let's say let's say that it is the next league of legends and you got 250 million people worldwide that are playing every day mm-hmm. and buying let's say of those 250 million 300,000 are buying $10 add-ons in a given day every single day. And you're not being compensated, even though your voice is part of the entire experience for each one of those 250 million people every single day. So you're talking about a billion dollar industry that's literally paying pennies, less than a penny on the dollar to the creative entities that, that create that. And so, you know, for someone, especially an actor, respected or not to say, you know, I don't know what they're crying about. That person just doesn't get it and to me is not really a professional actor, is not in it as a career and as part of the business. They're just working paycheck to paycheck and they're happy with, you know, their, you know, two room apartment and, you know, and, and that they're not working at Walmart and they just don't get it that they're really a ball player. And, you know, and, and, you know, the, they're licensing you and doing and selling toys of your, you know, your character and all that stuff. And it's you that's selling that stuff for them and you're not getting anything for that. And that is not equitable or fair, um, for what you're providing for the product. You know, sure, you know, you sit there and go, my gosh, two hours, four hours worth of work. That's absurd to be thinking that over the next 20 years, you could be making $300,000 off of two hours of work. Well, not if they're making $40 billion off of that two hours of work. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally. So it's not, it's not greed and it's not, oh gosh, this isn't fair for the day's work, you know. It's not fair for the project at large that's all so it's just so again it's in and and whatever the new contract will be is not something that's going to damage or hurt you know producers of games at all it's like it's just instead of it's like an oil company instead of making 500 billion dollars in profit this year they're going to make 4.99 and that's not enough Really? So, I mean, you know. What do you, so what do you that's think, real. though, about um, maybe a smaller developer? Um, someone who is maybe making their first game or they left the big company well, and they're setting up their own thing. There's, there's always exceptions, and, and like the, the Screen Actors Guild has, you know, has breakdowns for those as well. I mean, I, you know, a billion years ago, I, I helped negotiate the very first foreign dub agreement for all of the low budget anime things where. Um, you know, it's like, I'm sorry, we can't pay you $700 for the day. Well, cool, we understand your budget, so it'll be $45 an hour with a two-hour minimum. So well, there you, go. you I mean, get, I didn't know you that get, you, you get, as, you get as much, you get as much out of us in that two hours as you can, but if it's more than three characters, then it'll be another $45 and da da da. And, and that way, you know, I mean, if it's you doing the game, you're going, oh gosh, that's ninety dollars for every actor who comes in here for two hours. Plus, I've got the studio time. Plus, I got the engineer. Plus, I got this. You know, even even a low budget thing is not not you know it doesn't have the money, but but it's like they can get something done for twenty five thousand dollars, not two million dollars. You know, and it all and then you know there's you know so there's there's this stuff which is foreign dub. Then there's Super low budget, low budget, you know, mid, you know, there's, there's different levels yeah, of, 
of stuff. And so it would be the same kind of thing for a game. The problem is, is, um, they're actively going after non-union talent or people who are willing to work non-union mm-hmm. because that makes them millions more dollars in the long run. And yeah, it's just, so, it's yeah, just that's not the right. Problem a lot of people do have with the strike. Not that it's bad, but that it might not work. Do you think you guys see progress? There's been updates on the website a lot. But do you see things really changing? Do you think you guys could come up with an agreement soon, soon enough to, I don't know. It's not, it's, it's not up to us. It's up to them. Um, and it's really up to, um, you know, it's up to all of the actors who are in the guild to not work a non-union job. And they're, st- and they're still doing it under false names and different stuff. And then you've got, um, you know, you, you really can't fault the actors who are not in yet and are just trying to get go. You know, it's like, well, what options do I have? Mm-hmm. You know, um, so, you know, I, I get that, but, so a lot of you know, the, a lot of but it's, it's say, tough. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, you're totally right. Publishers shouldn't do this kind of thing. But then you'll see the developers, the guys who actually make the game, saying, don't worry, we wouldn't do it to you if they didn't make us do it. So do you still feel like there's good, big portions of the industry that um, that still support, you know, fair compensation for you guys? Do you have, like, a few companies? No, that no, because, because no, it's, it's, it's good. there's good people everywhere, but mm-hmm. they have to answer to, you know, I mean, it's the same kind of thing as answering to corporate, you know, mm-hmm. bureaucracy. It's like you have to cre- you have to come in, under budget, you know, even studio, I mean, it's cutthroat everywhere. The poor studios are having to, um, you know, they'll say, hey, we'll only charge you $15 an hour, even though it costs them $14 an hour to stay open just to get the gig, you know. I mean, it's, so there, there's just all that the undercutting and going and, and people trying to find it as cheap as they can. And then, there's a lot of product that gets put out that's really crappy. I mean, like you, you know, you'll you'll play a game and you'll go, my gosh, that that actor is horrible. Or, why, I mean, did they even understand what they were saying? Because the line reading is so bad in context of a story, you know. So that's a director thing and an actor thing, and it's like, you know, hey, I mean, I'm sure you've come across that kind of a, kind oh, yeah. of stuff. And sometimes you just go, ah, it doesn't bother me because the rest of it is so good, or the game experience is good, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it's it's really you know even even professional actors sometimes you know put in a bad performance. I mean, well, you know, look at his car. Um, pretty recently with uh, Destiny, you know, they got this Game of Thrones actor. They're basically a really well paid guy, a brilliant actor, and he came in, and you know, I tried to like it. You know, I really did. I tried to like it, and I played the game, and it's just garbage. And they had to get um, a new guy to come in and, and redo all of his lines. And is it the is, is it the guy or is it the game? So um, the game is pretty good, but the guy okay. that they brought in was a well paid, very famous A list actor, and he did a really bad job. So, so I kind of know what you're So about. you know, well, see, and you 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 sometimes have have the these these kind of issues that that happen you know, with uh, people who work a lot. Yeah, so now you could give him the benefit of the doubt and say, well, he was really busy, so he only had an hour to do his thing, and he didn't want people to tell him what to do. He's just going to read the lines, and that's going to be it, and then he's out of there because that's all the time he has, and they're thrilled to have him for that under those circumstances, okay? And then it turns out it didn't work out. Or is the guy a jerk? And he won't listen to direction, and he won't he won't do any line more than once, yeah. and so it comes off poorly. Or is it just a, a a bad performance, you know? And it's nobody's fault. He just was miscast or whatever. So there's you know any one of a number of ways that any of that kind of stuff can go. But I mean, for example, there's there's you know it, it's 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 not always great having the name actor. I mean, I, I feel like. I got Leonardo DiCaprio his his Oscar last year because his entire performance in The Revenant is me breathing, you know, really? and getting and getting beat up by the bear, you know. I mean, 
Yeah, you go back and we watch. You, yeah, the, you, yeah, I know the whole, the whole, the whole thing, and it, to the point of where it was mixed so high that that for me, I hated the movie because it was all about the breathing, and it just and it was all me, but it was still horrible. So like, if when you, when you go back and watch it, and he's getting tossed around by the bear because obviously it's all done with computers and everything, right? So, um, so it's me going, <laughs> you know, all that nonsense, right? And then the whole. And then the whole rest of the movie is me going, <sighs> yeah, the whole no thing. No way. Yeah. It just blew my mind uh, because well, that's one of the things that I both liked and didn't like about the movie is one that it was very visceral, and, right. and you felt like it was really like in your face. Right. Like, yeah, they're gonna listen to this breathing. Right. They're gonna like it. And, but at the same but time, they were, it, but they really did shoot it out in the snow and in brutal conditions in the woods, you know, unlike, you know, most stuff which gets done green screened and, and all that in the privacy of a nice comfy studio. So it, it, so, so much of it had to be, you know, looped in post production because of just all, all of that outdoor stuff. Well, um, if you watch the, I don't know, have you ever heard of, um, Honest Trailers? Have you ever heard of that before? Hmm. So basically, no. they make fun of movies, right? And they oh, there you go. Favorite format. And one of the things is they say. Uh, is is that like ending? the different endings? The different endings movie uh, no, trailer that's how it thing. Could have ended, but it, it's similar. okay because those are funny too. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Funny. You should look it up. But basically, it's to say you know what the summary of the movie is: Leo runs his way to an Oscar, and then they right. show a bunch of grunts and stuff. You should probably go and watch that and be curious. And it's hysterical movie. because you know it's me. So it's a, 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 and and there's no reason for anybody to know that, but it just cracked me up. It's like okay, okay whatever. Um, cause, so because I have to ask one more Ace Combat question. Sure, so I, sure, go ahead. Yeah. Ace Combat. <laughs> and then and like I say, you know, in in a couple of weeks, maybe after I I go onto YouTube and look at the stuff, or maybe go down to GameStop and see if there's. I, I wonder if there's a version that'll run on a PlayStation Three. Probably not, because it's so. So if old. you have the right model of PlayStation Three. Like the old, the original model, you can run. Yeah, I, I don't because my original blew up, so I got another one. So my advice you know. is, if you live in LA, there's a million um, retro game shops. Go to a retro game shop, pick up your PS2. You can get one for less than a hundred bucks. Oh. Um, you can pick up Ace Combat for Ace Combat Five, by the way, is the one you're in. Right. For like uh, ten bucks, twenty bucks, and. Yeah. It's it's a good game. If you like any kind of vehicle game, you'll like it. But here here's a question, real quick. Okay. Oh. So recently everybody basically wants it. If you're an Ace Combat fan, you want a remaster of what we like to call the holy trilogy of Ace Combat games. It's four, five, and zero. Which are pretty much the best ones that have been out so far. Uh-huh. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, but they're such classics. You know, if it'd be like putting Citizen Kane in color or, you know, um, something like that. So would you, um, like, say one day they call you and say, hey, we like you to do your lines again for Ace Combat 5 Remastered. Would you be interested in that? Would you support that idea? Absolutely. That abs- absolutely. Or even if they just remastered it and you know and and just did all of the you keep it exactly the same but you up the animation to you know uh to high def or even 4K you know and and you, you could you could keep the game the same um but you just up upgrade the technology it would be sure but I would I'd be happy to to re-record or redo or you know maybe he didn't really die <laughs> you know, the the no, plane and, went down. And, and the and plane and went and down, and he's been on an island, right? In Ace Combat Seven, there is like an older character who's supposed to be from Ace Combat Five, and we're all freaking out, like, "Oh, who is he? Who is he?" Yeah. And like a few people are like, "It's Chopper, guys." And they're like, "Ah, oh, no, it can't be Chopper. That's crazy." Well, and and it would be great if if those guys would contact me. But it's it's funny, you you know, whereas you guys would know that it was me. Somebody doing the new version of the game might yeah, not, right. and well, and could care less. They show him all injured. He's in like this suit. So a lot of people are like, "What is going on?" 
well, you know, who is this guy? He doesn't look like anybody. And, and this game is supposed to be set, you know, 20 years after five. Right. So I'm telling you, man, like, you know, if the strike ends anytime soon, you might want to, like, give him a call and say, hey, guys, you know, I'm totally into <laughs> Well, what 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 works more is if fans uh, tell people, you know, tell yeah, them, say, no, hey, you got to have you got to have Eddie Frierson do this thing. Why haven't we heard him, you know, in years? And it's you know, I basically I got so busy with with movies and TV stuff that yep. that um, that I haven't been asked to do things so, yeah, in a long time. Yeah, your last was in 2010, if IMDb is to be believed. Yeah, I'm not taking, you know. And of course, like one of the most famous ones is one of the first ones I did, which was the 25th anniversary Star Trek something, you know. So it's like, so you're connected to Star Trek, and I, I still have no idea. I can't remember what I did on that game. Um, so. I, I, I saw that, but I'm just such a non Star Trek guy. It's not even the right. Time I'm really but, but, but you know, there's such a Star Trek thing yeah. that it like, <laughs> like I never did an episode, but I'm tied to that. Really? Okay. So, <laughs> cool. Just another thing, since we have a little more time. Sure. Um, you were also in Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, and I did. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah. So I personally, I thought it was a little bit boring. I could see the quality, right? It's very well done. Um, but I yeah. kind of got on board with these new, really in-your-face, visceral, blood-everywhere anime. So... So Cowboy Bebop right. felt kind of tame to me. But I could see, like, the quality of the sound, especially. Really well yeah. done. The theme song and the dubbing and the and the, the Japanese thing is really good, too. I'm trying to think. I worked a lot with Leah Sargent on that, I, if I remember right. I'm not sure. Um, um, but that's how a lot of people came to check out a combat, is because, um, sorry, what was it called? M8? What was it? The production company? Magnitude 8. Yeah, with the studio. basically would group you guys all up and bundle you all together for games. And right. so people who liked Cowboy Bebop would check out Ace Combat because they're like, hey, the cast is Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so do you have any kind of fond memories of Cowboy Bebop? You were, you were talking about something. Uh, you know what? They're not not really. There's, um, you know, I just did little bits and pieces on Cowboy Bebop there, but but um, like uh, there was a huge series that you know had several different um, years and whatever uh, that was done at Magnitude L Eight, and that was like uh, it was El Hazard, mm-hmm. where um, I was. I was the man, oh, what was his name, y- Yamoto maybe or something, but anyway, he was one of these guys, you know, and um, it, that ended up being, you know, the alternative world and the thing and the thing and the whatever, and that was probably the last big thing at Magnitude 8 that I did, and that was right at the same time that I was uh, in New York in Times Square doing my one-man show. And so it was like trying trying to get that stuff done for Kevin on his low budget thing in and around my time in New York was really, really hard. But um and I think it was probably because I was so busy then that that's probably that that was the, the last big main character thing I, I did. But I, then the, there was a thing called Fighting Spirit, which, which a lot of people like, which was a boxing anime thing mm-hmm. where I had this whole different guy, which is not... I, I was all, you know, my, most of my characters and stuff that I always did were always like those those dudes, you know, <laughs> those guys, the the younger guys, That's and a, so um, so it was always really fun for me whenever I got to do, you know, they say, hey, can you do the old guy? It's like, of course I could do the old guy, but <laughs> you really want Michael McConaughey or somebody for that? But you know, I was always doing the 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 teenagers and the young dudes and doing all that stuff. So that's um, basically what Chopper is. He's kind of like a yeah, like, right, uh, right, guy. yeah. So, so. Um, what I want to kind of do real quick as, as a send off because we are I'm getting like sweaty. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I ran over time with you because I, I got I got off subject. I want to play a quick clip. Okay, um, and I want to see. I'm going to try to do this with every other cast member that I interview too, and see okay. how well. You can match it. Now, this is right before your death in the game. Okay. 
this is your last words, I think. Fa- very famous last words, too, by the way. Um, oh, okay. Well, okay. This needs to be my ringtone. For a voice actor, especially, I feel like this would be a really good kind of last line. So I want you to try and mimic it as good as you can. Okay. Okay. And a garbled goo. What's what's the actual line? Uh, so he goes. <laughs> I'm gonna miss that voice. Do you think you can? <laughs> I'm gonna miss that voice. I, oh, I, I, that was I, good. Good was job, that it? Man. That was good. Because that was just, that that was. That was just guessing, so because yeah, I couldn't really hear. That was almost that was almost perfect, man. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, so who else? Who else are you calling for for all this? So Who's, who the all? The plan. The plan is I've talked to the the female member of the squad. Um, I think her name's Karen, and I was actually um, I'm still kind of doing it. I was actually dubbing my old game, my own game, and before the strike happened and stuff, I called her about doing some voice acting and. Um, so I've talked to her. I'm going to call her again and see if she'll do the interview. There's a couple singers who are also doing kind of the, the theme songs, and I'm going to give them a call, too, and see if they want to do mm-hmm. it. And that's pretty much it. I'm hoping to do the main members of the of the kind of the squad, you know, the, the guys. And who, who were the main guys? So I don't know the actor's name um, by heart. There's Karen, and she's the girl, and she's a total badass in the game. And she's been yeah. pretty successful. There's a guy named, in the game, his name is Glenn. Is it Karen Strassman? It wasn't her, yeah, was Karen it? Karen Strassman. Wow, good job. Yeah. Oh, she's, she is a doll. Love her. Really? So you already you already, t- you already talked to Karen? Yeah, yep. For about now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's a doll, and uh, you know, and I work with her off and on all the time. So that's cool. that's kind of fun. That'll yeah, be fun. so it'll be fun to like yeah. line, line these interviews up next to each other then and see, see how yeah. it goes. Um, but it was a total blast talking to you. Like as a fan, I got to tell you, this was really fun for me. And, sure. Uh, and I really do hope you check out Ace Combat pretty soon and, and see what what you get out of it. Oh well, and, and, and at the very least, I'll you know I'll try and look up on YouTube and get kind of a storyline rundown. Yeah. And and it's like, oh, that game. Oh, okay. Because again, like we didn't see any of the animation either on on a lot of that stuff. And what was the what was the, what was it? Fighting Spirit that was an anime thing and also a game. I'm trying to think. Uh, um, uh, dot hack maybe. Dot dot hack. I don't know that I did the game for dot hack, but oh, you um, did a lot of games for dot hack. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Because that's so. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, because it's like there's also they also would take stuff from an actual, you know, anime anime cartoon and they could throw that into the game. You know, I mean, it's like cool. you never knew what was going on with anything. So. Huh. Well, you know, cool. this is a lot of great material, too. i got to tell you, you, thank you for taking the extra time. You know, when I you said 10 or 15 minutes, I was like, oh. Yeah. And well, and again, it's like I wish I could help you out more, you know, as far as remembering it or having some kind of pithy story for you. But um, other than, you know, it's just a, a special mention of Kevin Seymour over at Magnitude 8 because it was really a shock to everybody when he passed away a few years ago, I think it was a heart attack, and I don't, I don't even think he was fifty. Wow. Um, that's yeah. So, and he was always, he was one of those guys where it was always a low budget situation, and he was always scrounging from check to check, and you know, just a, a good guy, and you always wanted to to help him out, and and you know, this would have been one of his projects too. So. You know, I, it's funny. You know, as a gamer, you just see the the finished product. Right. You're always kind of aware in the back of your head, like, wow, 200 people worked on this. But it, it's sad when, like, someone you don't know who to thank, you know, dies and you didn't even know. That, that's really... Yeah. Um, that hits so. me, and, and I'll make sure to keep it in the interview, right? Sure. Um, All right. Again, someone, um, if, if, some, if, if something comes up in your head that you, you know want to ask about or whatever or just say hey look can you can you look at this youtube video and and then i want to get a five minute comment on it or something i mean i'm okay. happy to do I, that i'll definitely take you up on that if i if i okay, need no. anything but thank you so much and i really encourage you come on to reddit sometime come to this combat reddit we'll all we'll all go crazy over you and you make 
That's wrong. Okay, I'll have to. I mean, my kids are on Reddit all the time, but I, you know, it's like I, I you know, you so gotta just go to Reddit. Reddit and, and just pan that too, by the way. That you're like doing them a, a disservice. Yeah, they just, you know, they just don't, they don't care enough about, you know, the old stuff. You know how they, and everything's on, everything's online and playing against and with somebody on the other side of the world right now. Yeah. So yeah, I can kind of sympathize yeah. a little bit. All right. Well, we cool. really are. I really do actually have to go now. But okay, get so get out of here then. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll see you around. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Bye bye.